to the dark side. Black Rose. Tail out the water. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm trying to get me in the trim tabs. One place you don't want your fish to run to is the trim tabs. Let me get the net. I'll we'll go over what we're using today. Uh, pretty one. So the bait of choice today, we're going with our matrix swim shad. You can use this in our five inch or our three inch. I got the three inch on right now. Redfish been a little finicky so far this summer. We got a decent amount of them. This is actually a small one compared to what I've been catching. We've been getting some, probably the biggest slots I've ever seen in our area, off the Wrigley's and Intercoastal, and off the Mississauga. All of that's been really good. We're gonna be doing a lot of sight fishing the next few weeks. And I'm gonna show you another really good lure to rig weedless that we carry on our matrix shed line. All right, let's get this lure rig back up. Whenever you sight fishing, we go over this all, all the time. A, you wanna be up on a stand, whether it's an ice chest or a big tall stand, you wanna elevate yourself, get you a good pair of polarized sunglasses like we have here at Matrix. We got our Matrix uh, mirrors, which are great. See how the sun's in the camera? You do not want that. You don't want the sun in your face, you want the sun in your back. So however you gotta enter the pond, Make sure to enter it and try to use that sun to your back as much as you can. And then you just start patrolling the area, looking for big red things. The cleaner the water, the easier it is for you to see them, but it doesn't necessarily have to be as clean as it is right now to be on a good, in a good redfish area. Let's see if we can stalk out another one. have no prayer. Saw him so far away, I could make a really good cast on him. Reeled it right past his nose. Then I kind of burned it. He started chasing it, charged it, and just couldn't stand that little swim shed. Whenever you fish in these duck ponds, you'll get these big grass mats, like you can see right here next to me. And you might think the pond's totally grassed over, but a lot of times they leave, the grass won't grow right on the bank and it leaves a little natural highway, and that can be where all of the reds are hanging. Or you might have to push right over a duck pond, and there'll be some, I mean, I'm sorry, right over the grass mat, and it'll be a nice clear area on one or other, you know, on the other side of the pond. So you just gotta visually look at it and try to figure out where a good float zone is. You don't wanna be on too much grass. You want grass in the pond, but you wanna be fishing the part that's not choked out. One thing I look for when I'm coming into a duck pond 
If you start seeing stingrays floating around the pond, you can bet your bottom dollar them reds are right somewhere near, nearby, somewhere close. So, like if I'm idling around or burning on the trolling motor, not seeing much, and then boom, I start seeing a stingray or two, I'll slow that trolling motor down. Or if I'm on plane and see that, I'll put it, I'll put it in neutral, kill it, and start my drift. Stingrays are just as important as seeing a redfish. Really, I mean, for whatever reason. That's what goes hand in hand. You know, they, they really hang out together in these duck ponds. Here's one right here. Actually, while I was saying that, I just caught one out the corner of my eye. He's a little deep. Let's see if you can see him. He's right there. He's buried. Let's see if I can get him to spook off. Look, there he goes, see? That's what you want to see. All right, we're using a matrix swim shed. Let me show you how to rig this. You rig it just like the crawl. The nose on it is a little bit narrower. I like to pipe just a little nip off the top. Helps me corkscrew it in. This is our weedless pro lock hooks that we carry on our website. We also sell at your local retailers. These really match the crawl good. This is a four aught hook. You could get away with a three aught on the swim shed, but going with a four aught today. That's what that puppy looks like. Let me tie it on and get back after it. Good one, baby. You ain't flipping many of these in. These are all five, six pounders, up to about eight. Look at that grass in his mouth. That's what you want to be on. Got to be on that snot grass. Got to be on the grass. Again, on that three inch. You can also use the five inch swim shed. They love this thing. It's doing really a good job today in Tyson Bites. On that particular one, there was a school of two. They were cruising, pitched on one, bam. If I had two people on a boat, we would have doubled up. All right, the conditions we got right now is what we call slick, calm, and sunny. This is the optimal conditions you can have. We got a super high tide but then it's falling pretty good right now i would say that's borderline my absolute favorite you know with it being very high i can get in some real shallow stuff and with it falling i feel like it just triggers these redfish to eat and be aggressive float high tail do a lot of cool things get up in schools and bunches but something about being slick calm is is just fantastic for when we're red fishing. It, for one, it just helps you be able to see everything on the water, all the movements and such, tailing fish, waking fish, and then you know where to peel your eyes when you get close and then you'll see the actual redfish itself. Let's see if we can get another one in the box. All right, I know I'm going into the sun right now, which I said don't do, but we already made a drift through here, and but we stayed on the right-hand side. So what I'm gonna do, is push back into the sun then I'm gonna loop it back around and fish the left hand side with the sun to my back so that's a con that's like a little thing that a lot of anglers don't understand is all right so you fish the right side of the pond sun was at your back saw plenty of fish don't come up and burn the other side of the pond looking into the sun it's gonna because if there's a lot of fish on there you're probably gonna spook a bunch of them as you won't see them that far in advance. But if you just come back on the same shoreline you push or the same side, I'm kind of going right down the middle. I'm still looking for fish, don't get me wrong. I still can see them, it's just a lot harder. But once I get to the top end of this pond, I'm gonna begin my approach and come back with the sun on my back on the opposite shoreline.
awesome little visual I had there. Two of them sitting in this little channel, swimming at me. I'm floating at him. Had very little time to react. Pitched right on his nose. And he ate. Awesome deal. All right, guys, let's go ahead and end it on this beauty right here. And uh, again, using that Matrix Swim Shan. Got three colors in this. Worked awesome today. And the reason I put this on is because right when I came into this pond, I saw just tons of mullet. If you're seeing a lot of fin fish in the area that your, your redfish are in, this is a really good choice. If you're seeing a lot of crabs, I'd recommend the Matrix Crawl, which you've seen in a lot of our previous episodes. Come out here, this is what we're gonna be doing for a while, sight fishing reds. We don't really transition too much back into trout until September. We might throw, you know, if we run into them on one of the deeper bridges in the Wrigley's, we might throw a dockside TV together, but for the most part, it's redfish season, nice sunny days. These things are floating around everywhere. It's been a really good year with this. The water's really nice. Make sure to subscribe to the monthly bait box. Get your hands on some of these swim sheds. Just get out here, get in on this redfish action. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We got some really great sight fish and redfish videos out there. Check them all out. They're usually in the summertime. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Until next time, good fishing.